Seoul is a very interesting capital and consists of great culture, rich traditions, a lot of food with great flavors, and new buildings in a mixture with the old architecture. You cannot get bored here, regardless if you are into markets, tasting new food, history and culture, or just want to know more about this great capital. Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel, Maria's Travel Tips, where I'll share with you my best experience and tips if you're going to South Korea. This video is about Seoul, but I've also made other videos about Yeonju, which was the Asian capital of the Shila Kingdom, and the city Busan, which is famous for its culture, village and fish market. I suggest that you watch these videos afterwards if you want to know more about this country and where to go. Now back to Seoul. First, a really good tip to know if you're going to take public transportation a lot, I recommend that you get the T-Money card. With this card you can save money and time, because you don't need to buy single tickets. You can also use it in stores that have the T-Card logo in the window. For more info, just write T-Money card on Google. There are many interesting and historical things to see in South Korea's capital. One of them is the Jongdyeong Gong Palace, which has been on UNESCO's World Heritage list since 1997. When we visit, it happened to be the last Wednesday in October, and that was the culture day, so the entrance was free. So if you're going to Seoul in the end of the month, you can plan to go there on the last Wednesday to save money. But if that isn't possible, don't worry, the ticket only costs $3. The palace was built in the beginning of the 1400 and was a royal villa in the Joseon dynasty. It was destroyed during the Japanese invasion in 1592 and later rebuilt, so it is today considered to be the most well-preserved royal residential place of all the Joseon time. Remember to go inside and see the throne in the big Jeongjong Hall. The throne is and was used for holding the most formal of state events such as auditions with ministers or coronation ceremonies. When you have seen the buildings, continue to the beautiful garden in the back. It has the name The Secret Garden. It was supposed to be a place for the royal family to relax, but was also used for military exercise and archery contests. The Secret Garden takes almost 60% of the entire area. One of the area I also really enjoyed seeing was the Bokchon Hanak village. This village has over 900 traditional houses called Hanks. I recommend that you take the time to go around the area because there's a lot of beautiful restored architectural features like small courtyards. The neighborhood is also filled with small cafes, art galleries and good restaurants. Another must-see palace is the Jeonggong Bunggong Palace which is quite different from the Shang Jeonggong Palace, which was the first one you saw. The Jeongbonggong Palace was the first royal palace built in the Joseon dynasty. A ticket is less than $3. Don't forget to go inside the buildings and see the beautiful paintings and hall. Just outside the palace is the Gwangamun Square, and you can continue to the Jeongjeong Stream, which is a 10 km long stream that is quite peaceful. I'm so glad that we also went to the Seoul Tower, also called Namsam Tower, because the view is amazing from the top. You can get there with a bus or a cable car, but when we wanted to go there was a big line and we have to wait an hour if we wanted to go up with the cable car, so we preferred to walk instead. There are some steps in the beginning of the road, but later on it's just a normal path. So besides saving money and not waiting in a boring line, I recommend walking to the tower, because it is a really nice walk and you see a lot of the city from different views while walking. And it only took us about 40 minutes, so we actually saved time as well, compared to the waiting line. On the top there are some shops and restaurants and of course the tower. We didn't go up in the tower because we thought the view was very good from the ground. It can be a good idea to check the weather channel, so you know what day during your stay that would be best to go up in the tower, especially if you want to see the view on a sunny day. A lot of people leave a padlock as a memory. If you want to do that as well, I recommend that you buy a padlock in the city, because it's more expensive in the souvenir shops by the Seoul Tower. But no matter where you decide to buy it, 
Make sure you write your wish on the lock before locking it to the fence if you want your wish to come true. Another very interesting and historical place that I think you should visit is the Soul Wall. The view is beautiful because you can see a lot of soul on the top and it is a very nice way to take a hike. So remember to wear good shoes and bring water with you. Today the wall is open for the public and it is free to go on the wall, but be aware that you must bring your passport because you'll get registered. You should also know that on a big part of the wall you are not allowed to take any pictures or videos. Now let's talk about the food. The South Korean food is delicious and you won't go hungry to bed. You can find anything from Korean sushi, good soups and barbecue. And you must try the bibimbap if you want to go to South Korea. It's a traditional dish with rice, vegetables, stir fried beef and egg and it is all mixed together with a red pepper paste. We tried it with octopus and we got a lot more than just the bibimbap. We paid East 9,000 won, which is less than $8 for this meal and we were really full and satisfied. The restaurant is located at Superwoo, if I pronounce it right, but at least I've written it here, and it is right next to this statue. On the road there are several restaurants serving bibimbap with octopus and other delicious fish dishes, so it is pretty easy to find. Enjoy and bon appetit! Another place to get really local and fresh food is at the Myeongdong street. The street is actually a shopping street, but you can also find many food stalls with delicious food from savory to sweet desserts. The street can be a little crowded, so make sure you take your time both to look at the many mouthwatering temptations and to do some shopping in the street and for example get a new pair of earrings or two. Another dish to try if you dare is the dish UK, which is a Korean style beef tartare topped off with a raw egg yolk. The raw beef meat is mixed with some pear slices and a generous amount of sesame seeds. I think it was a funny dish to try, but I couldn't eat it all because it was just too much raw meat and iron taste for me. You can eat it at the Jongwang Market, where there's also a lot of other delicious Korean street food. You can also find a lot of good food at Lotte in Seoul, because there's a supermarket place in the store and you will without doubt find something to eat, regardless if you are into traditional dishes, want to cook yourself or just want to have a salad. And let's not forget all the delicious desserts. The store is located several places in Seoul and besides being tempted by the Korean food, you can also take a tour on the other floors and do some regular shopping. My last good tips about places to eat are when you are traveling with the subway, where there are so many delicious stores where you can find a good meal and you can also get to see a lot of the Korean culture like these Korean dresses. During our time in Seoul we also wanted to do a little partying. We had been recommended to go to the website friendsinkorea.com. On this website you can see bars where you can meet other people that are traveling in Seoul as well. You do have to pay a little for the entrance, but I think it was a great opportunity to meet other travelers, hear about their experience, and we also met locals at the event as well. During our time in Seoul, we also decided to go a little further away to see some nature and went to the Iceland Naminara Republic. It took around two hours from Seoul to get there with a bus and then the ferry. The island is five kilometers long and has a lot of different trees. I think it was beautiful to be around nature. We went there the 2nd of November and saw the beautiful leaves in different colors like yellow, brown and red. If you really like nature, I would suggest you go there because it's a peaceful place and I really enjoyed seeing the fall with all the difference and ripened colors. The only minus about the trip was that we had to be there for 4 hours because the ferry didn't leave before. So you don't have to rent a bike on the island because it only takes one hour to go around. Even though I don't regret visiting the island, especially with the beautiful fall, it is more than enough time on the island in my opinion. But if you want to go, I suggest you google Naminara Republic and don't buy the tickets too late because the first day we wanted to go, all tickets were sold out. We also went to South Korea's largest theme park called Everland. Once you have paid for the entrance, you can enjoy the mini rides. If you don't have a lot of time in Seoul, I wouldn't recommend to go to Everland 
because the roller coasters and other activities are mainly for kids. Now one last thing to know and it's a funny fact. South Korea has the same power outlet as we have in some of the countries in Europe. That took me by surprise, but we also came from Japan that has another power outlet, so I just wasn't expecting that. This is all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and will give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you are interested in knowing more about my travel videos from South Korea or Taiwan, Japan, Macau or Thailand, I have made other videos for you to enjoy. Have a good day. Bye.